Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what's the difference between vision of certainty versus seeing visions during meditation? Are visions encouraged to see? No. Yeah, that, that the vision of certainty is that when you've trained in meditation and connecting with the shaykh, connecting with the shaykh, connecting with the shaykh, when the shaykh is speaking and you're connecting, you can see what he's talking about. You're on a vision the minute he starts to speak. And anything he speaks of depending upon your spiritual ability, you'll enter right into that discussion, onto that teaching, into where he's going, what he's teaching and that you can later meditate on that knowledge and it begins to expand. Seeking vision is a complete distraction because shaitan will play with the person and Instead of reaching the target and connecting with the shaykh, they're, they're looking around, there's a, there's a jacket, oh here comes a jubba, here comes a, a sword from heaven this, and then they become imaginational world. And that's not the purpose of, of this vision of certainty, it didn't say visions or khayral I think it they call imaginary world. It's not, not to go into imaginary world but yaqeen, the ayn uh, yaqeen is they train, train, trained with the shaykh. Why? Because they know this shaykh, right? So if you looking at the shaykh and all of a sudden you're asking to connect and see him but he looks different, he doesn't have a turban, you're doing something wrong. You look again in your heart, he doesn't have a beard, there's something wrong with you, not the shaykh. Something is inadequate in, in your practices that you're not able to see him in a state of perfection. And that you train and train and train and then you begin to see him in his state. Then you're asking to be dressed by him, that I see your presence, I'm familiar with, I know who you are, I know how you sound because you can't connect with a shaykh that you're not familiar with because then shaitan can play with you because you don't know that shaykh, you don't know who you're connecting with. So there has to be a familiarity, there has to be a, a love and a… And a a bonding with your heart that you trust this individual, your heart resonates with them. So as you see them with your physical eyes and you close your eyes and say that, I want to be in your presence at all times and they keep training and training and training until their connection is strong. As soon as the talks begin they make their connection and they can begin to witness the talks. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Talks. Understand the talks at a much, much higher level. And that becomes Ayn al Yaqeen, in which their, their vision is of a certainty. They have like a certified vision in which they become stronger and stronger in their heart connection. And the knowledges the shaykhs are teaching are like portals. As soon as the talks begin there's a portal above the association wherever the person is. And energy is now tanzila, is coming upon the association, upon the home. Wherever you're hearing the talk there's an opening of an energy coming. And some people witness spiritual beings coming with that energy. So that to push that energy into their soul and into their reality. So there is a, a, is a transmission, there's a whole process that's taking place. So ilmu yaqeen comes with an immense energy. It comes like a guarded and encrypted energy. The heavenly encryption is a, accompanied by heavenly spirits. So people have said, I turn on the video and all of a sudden these light beings came into the house and they held me down 
as the talk was going on. Well yeah because their heaven encryption is not like a, a satanic encryption which is like a coded information and light, that's the imitated. Heavenly encryption are by heavenly beings that Allah is transmitting the knowledge and it's being transmitted via heavenly beings. They enter into the, the association or into the premises and they secure that premise and the knowledge now begins to flow to the servant. And at times they may even hold the servant down so that any nefarious energy and nefarious beings have to leave and that the full conveyance of light can transpire into the servant. And many different variations of it, some watch the videos and see a light coming from the video onto them and looking onto them. So there's many different ways that Allah is will open whatever He wants. But it's coming encrypted. So ilm yaqeen has an immense force, immense power and uh, immense ability. Ain yaqeen requires the servant to begin to log in and attune themselves for the encryption code. So similar now for our, our techie people to understand your cold storage and an app means that times you have to reconnect the two devices. So the fact that you're practicing and then you're connecting with the shaykh so that he can reattune this knowledge that you're trying to connect and to receive. So then you have to connect with the app so that it can verify your encryption code in your heart. Once the presence of the shaykh is verifying your encryption code then the conveyance of knowledges can begin. So each shaykh is like a smart contract with them and that's why you say you can't bounce around. Once these technologies come, the heavenly kingdom, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. These technologies are showing immense realities of heavenly kingdoms and people think they're going to be free but they should be scared to death. Not a dollar will move on this earth without these people knowing every dollar. Your taxes won't be anything you file, your taxes will be sent to you. That you made 10,000, you spent 4,000, you saved 2,000 and that's a symbol from Allah. You think that Allah doesn't know what you made and what you paid and what you didn't pay? So this heavenly kingdom when we say that the, the heavenly kingdom is coming, yeah shaitan is going to imitate that onto earth in which everything will be known, every movement will be known. But for the believer it gives them more understanding of yaqeen that, that this connection I have that I have to keep making a connection for my encryption code to go. And you can't bounce around to people because once Imam Ali said, once you've taken the knowledge of somebody it's like you've drank from their milk, you're locked to that person. So you see how you'd have to tell somebody to, uh, 2000 years ago you'd have to give them analogies, oh you know it's like drinking the, the mother's milk. You know you can't take your child to feed from everyone because then he cannot marry anyone. Because everyone is then considered his mother and those become his brothers and sisters. Then another way was described that if you took one letter of knowledge from somebody you owed them your life. Meaning what? You're on a smart contract with them. As soon as you sit in association with the shaykh and you heard a letter, a contract went out onto your heart and locked onto you. Now if you want to activate this contract you can't get it off, you can't break it off. It's locked onto you until your soul arrives into its destination. And if you verify the contract, you encrypt and open up your encryptions, this contract will be giving its fruits. But it doesn't mean you go to 10 different sources, 10 different places, means then nothing happening for you and you'll be a person like a lost wallet. You don't remember your login, you don't remember your phrases and so many people when Bitcoin came out lost big wallets, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, they lost it.
means Allah is showing that these are lost opportunities. You came across that shaykh, you didn't keep your loyalty, you lost your contract. These smart contracts are not replaceable. So then the one who understands begins to understand, no my life is locked onto this. And as soon as it's locked on I'm going to meditate so that why? So his USB and the shaykh is like an app and they're now going to communicate with each other. The shaykh is going to send a code to your heart, your heart's going to send a code back and the encryption has to unlock. Otherwise if you send a code to the shaykh's heart that, I'm not really with you, I'm just trying to take this for some other nefarious reason, it'll come back to the shaykh's heart blocked. And then you log in, log in, log in until three times and then your connection is blocked because your manners are wrong, your understanding is incorrect. If you think the technology is difficult, imagine connecting in, in Allah's kingdom. You know, you people are worried when they make these connections, too many errors, what happens? You get locked out of your, your device because they think that something has been hijacked. Well, Allah is giving all of this as an example for these techies to understand, oh the heavenly kingdom is much more difficult. That's why muraqabah, when the same tech person says, there's no need to make muraqabah, well then why does your app need to connect to your ledger? To verify who you are and whatever trade you want, whatever knowledge you want, well it has to be a verification. Who are you and why is this going into your wallet or your heart? So no definitely all these sciences and these technologies these people are bringing on this earth, it's a sign from the heavenly kingdom that's coming. That's why all of this is coming because the Dajjal is trying to make his kingdom like the heavens. So he'll bring all of these technologies we said where Allah doesn't need machines. Allah says, you already have it within you. You have to connect to the device, your shaykh is, is, your, is your app and via him you have to connect, you have to pass your encryptions. Once you pass your encryptions then what is it that you want? Which coin do you want? Make your request, what knowledge you want because they put coins because that's what they value. But if you're from the heavens what do you want is knowledge, which knowledge you want? Well log in meditate, start doing your encryption, they'll send a signal to your heart and see if it's in the correct condition because they know the heart, they don't go by the words. You know the person has to be sound mind, loyal, good character and then the encryption codes begin to flow into the heart. That becomes ilmu yaqeen. So their ayn and the ilm is opening, once the download is into your ledger it's haqq yaqeen because it's now burned into your reality. And the only way they can pull it out of your reality is if you leave and think that you're going to take it and leave, Allah will cause you to start backbiting the shaykh, right? Because that's the only thing that can pull your hasanat. As soon as you start to backbite the shaykh, Allah will retrieve the coin from your wallet and give it back to the shaykh. Because the only way to lose good deeds is when you backbite your brother. Allah will take your good deeds and give it back to that person who was backbitten and will send his sayat and his sins upon you. So it can actually reverse your coins. So they haven't received and understood that safety mechanism yet but I'm sure they'll get there on dunya but Allah has that safety mechanism. So everything in Allah's kingdom is encrypted and everything in Allah's kingdom is about to open upon this earth. Those whom are sharp and understand they can see through the technology a clear vision into the heavenly kingdom on how this heavenly kingdom works at a far greater security level inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, Sayyidina Umar anhu said, Beware the firasa of the believer. Can you please explain the difference between firasa and basira? 
Fa Nas says, the light in which transmits from your eyes, basiran is the, the heart that can see. So the, it's, it's of a similar nature but a different power. Ahlid basira means that the mirror within their heart is purified and that their ability to perceive is the mirror of their heart is, is reflecting from the reality of their shaykh. They can't achieve the station of their shaykh because they say the shaykh is at least a thousand maqams above you. And if anyone studied light, if you think you're going to build yourself, well he's already a thousand maqams ahead of you and he's continuously moving at a speed of light and you're continuously moving so it becomes a constant. You can't ever catch up, that way Prophet can never catch up to Allah As Allah is expanding, Prophet is at a fixed qawbu qawsayni aw adana. At a fixed distance as Allah is expanding Prophet is moving but it's not for one to overtake the other nor can the student in that reality because they're moving at light, the shaykh is moving at light. As much as you think you're achieving he's already surpassed that. So it means that in the meditation when they learn meditation they're asking to make their heart like a mirror. So they're washing, 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 cleaning, cleaning. Then when they meditate the reflection of the shaykh's reality begins to reflect upon them. That's now opening basir because they can see that reflection in their heart. When they have the abundance of that reflection and the abundance of knowledges, now that knowledge gives them energy. Means the abundance of Divinely Angels gives them the byproduct is knowledges. When their heart becomes overflowing with these powers then what happens? Their eyes emit lights. So we describe that. We describe the right eye and left eye and these are from Insana Kamil. So you have to get the Insana Kamil book and that describes that. When the reality of Prophet has Imam al-Hasan, Imam al-Husayn, Qurat al-Ain, Jatt al-Hasan in wal Husayn. From the light of Prophet's creation, Allah created the two eyes of his light from the reality and the light of Imam al Hasan and Imam al Husayn. And they carry the attributes of Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. So, when these lights are activated on the soul of the believer that they inheriting from these lights of Prophet then each one is now opening a different reality. When their lights open within their eyes this is now an opening of their firasat. They can open from the light of nur and the light of hayat. So from their eye a light comes and gives nur and this is a, a life and a light that gives them light that is not available from shaitan and grant them hayat and bring the dead to life. So the firasul of Allah is when Allah gives to the servant in Hadith al-Qudsi, I become the eyes in which you see. The breakdown of that hadith is that Prophet will give to you from his right eye and from his left eye's lights and those are in the realities of Imam al-Hasan and Imam al-Husayn and that's why it's so important to love all of these family members, all of the holy companions, all of them. Because only through love you can achieve these things. Otherwise people whom are devoid of love and want to make nasty uh, uh, comments and they're thrown in rubbish can. They don't get anywhere close to the beatific realities, they become like the rubbish of the kingdom, you throw it out. Is so far from the reality. So the ashiqeen with all their immense love is to be dressed by these lights. If they put the light of Imam al-Hasan into your eye and the light of Imam al-Husayn into your eyes then you become Qurat al-Ain, the, the beloved lights of Prophet So of course then Allah is be careful 
For when this believer looks at you, he looks from Allah's lights which is then defined as these Muhammadan haqqaiqs inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Thank you for this immense love and these immense teachings which have illuminated our hearts. May Allah Thank bless you and give you more. Uh, Allah bless you. Sayyidi, our question is about fear versus love. The Wahhabi ideology puts a lot of emphasis on fear, whereas your teachings emphasize immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu One emotion feels cold, one feels like a warmth. Can these two emotions coexist together or must one submit to the other? And is this reality to your teachings on the huruf of Alif, Lam, Mim? Hmm? Are they related? <laughs> Too clever, he's just mixing in all these things, yeah. Just go to fear and love and we can accomplish that. The, the people whom they talk, they talk from where they are. So if they study the levels of the soul, the levels of the… they call nafs but they're actually the levels of the soul, what happens at the highest level is all about love where Allah takes a nafs al Mardiya, all of these beatific realities at the top level and is dumping them in oceans of love and muhabbat. These are the reality of what we described as who men, who men. Allah granted them to inherit from who? Hay of hidayat. So Allah grants them that you, you will be opening your hidayat and that all your senses will be opened. Alif, Lam, Mim, Tilka, Ayatul Qur'an, no, what's, okay, what's the beginning one? Alif, Lam, Mim, Allahumma salli wa sallim Muhammad, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Hudan al-Muttaqeen, Alif, Lam, Mim, Say again? Alif, Lam, Mim, Thalika al-Kitabu la rayba fi, Hudan al-Muttaqeen. Hudan al-Muttaqeen, yeah, Alif, Lam, Mim, Thalika al-Kitabu la rayba fi, no crookedness. Hudan al mutaqeen that's when we mention the Hudan al mutaqeen then Allah has to open for them hidayat. That they followed Prophet no crookedness in their way and, and following. Allah dressed them from Alif, Lam, Mim and all its realities. And then as a result of that Allah when He wants to grant them Hudan al mutaqeen means that their mutaqeen is they have a, a certainty over all of their attributes. So all their senses Allah has made it to be sanctified and that's hidayat. So they guide with a sanctified breath, sanctified vision, sanctified hearing, sanctified state of touch. So all of their senses are working at the level of their soul. And then again each to their own, there are limits upon limits, nobody is at one particular limit. As a result Allah addressed them from wow of wadood. So then these servants of guidance and love. So this is the guidance of Allah the guide through love. And as a result this is the immensity of the station of their souls. The one whom guides from fear is nowhere in this category, it's not, not of any guidance. So that one whom guides of fear is preoccupied with shaitan because shaitan is playing with the individual. So they call that fire and brimstone teaching. The one whom is in fire, the one whom is in Jahannam, all he knows is Jahannam. So he talks about Jahannam to everyone because that's all he knows because he's in it. That's why most of their teaching is munafiqeen, is hypocrisy. As a result they know they're in a fire, they're going to be punished. As a result all their talking is like that. Bad mouth, bad character, bad actions. So that, that's something completely different and that's why everything, everything forbidden, everything is, is haram, everything is wrong but they are hypocrites. 
So now look what you see coming out of there. I think they have a, a, an idol show coming, right? They have an idol show coming from that region now, idol. They're not even allowed to use this word <laughs> and they have their idol show coming now. These were the same people who brought this madhab. What happened now? Because in the ev eventually the truth and the false they don't match. And Allah described the false zahukan. The, the, the falsehood is like a waste, it falls apart, it's, it's not based on anything. It's definitely not firm with a firmness from Allah and then the, the falsehood falls and they, they actually show who they are and they start having you know concerts and everything they want to do and then good for them if that's what they like. But what they brought for people of religion, absolutely not. And the way of religion, the way of Prophet was ishq and muhabbat. They didn't know compassion until they understood Sayyidina Muhammad They didn't understand generosity until they understood the generosity of Prophet So this is the only way of guidance. The one whom guides through fear then is misguided and is not correct. The one whom guides through love then attracts the hearts and the the hearts and being, not the minds but the heart and souls of people. For we know that people don't listen, you know you don't… you cannot force people and that even goes deeper into we described the physical and the wave. Particle discussions, if you're going to reduce your life to a particle being you'll continuously be in confrontation. Anytime you want to be particle means you're going to use your form. If I'm going to use my form to guide you, well then I'm going to argue with you. When you don't listen I'm going to come and shake you because that's what they do, they start to fight because you don't listen to them. They start to fight you because there's the world of form. But guidance is not based on the world of form where I say it, if you don't listen I start to scream it, if you don't listen I come after you start shaking you. But this world of wave in which they meditate, they contemplate, Allah dresses their soul and they begin to teach through love and muhabbat. And as a result people listen through love, it disarms them from all their egoism and it enters into their soul. And as a result of love they begin to follow. Nobody's going to follow in the last days by rules. Everybody comes out and says, oh this like this, this like this, this like this, nobody's listening. They're not listening to Allah, why would they listen to you? So the remedy in these days is the immense love and, and muhabbat, love of Prophet so that the magnet of your heart can begin to open and be attracted to the Muhammadan reality. If your heart should connect that becomes the draw that draws you into the reality of Prophet And now you see people just evil, evil, horrible expressions, yellings and screamings and just evilness because that's the, the evilness of shaitan. Somebody put on a comment that, what does the hijab have to do with demons? Because we said that the demon come and convince you to lose your scarf. And then the comment was, what does demon have to do with hijab? Well let me ask you this, what does Allah want for you and what does shaitan want for you? Allah wants paradise for you and a protection on this earth that He sent you to. They say, yes this is correct. So anything Allah is giving for us is for our protection on this abode, on this earth He sent us to. What does shaitan want for you? Your destruction and your demise. So anything that you do on this earth that inspired by shaitan is for your destruction and your demise. And that's why we teach by energy, on energy level only. That which you cover from the sight of people, their envy and enmity is protecting, you're shielding. What we call hijab and, and is a protection. 
Hijab is actually like a protection in its word in Arabic, it's to protect yourself. So anybody who shields themselves from energies of people that's why the dress of modesty, it's a shield from these energies. So when I'm building my energy, one, one way of building my energy is not to lose my energy every day. So when I build my energy I have to protect the parts of my body that if people look at them they'll be able to pull my positive energy out and send negative energy upon myself. Then I depleted all my practices for that day and then we gave the talk about the regulator, that your regulator is to push you down so that you never achieve your potential energy power. Well. The shaykhs are the guide for the heavenly reality that come and get your 70 trillion volts that are flowing through every cell in your body. One, build it and then protect it and keep it. And if shaitan comes to you to do something so that you lose your energy then you understand that everything has to do with the demon. The demon wants to disarm you to lose all your energy and all your shield of protection any sci-fi movie teaches you that. The sci-fi movie is you have a shield, why? So that the outside force can't fire on your ship. But as soon as the shield drops what happens? They start to fire and they blow up your ship. Same for human beings, Allah gave to us a shield. The man's shield he grows his beard is a protection. The man's shield he covers his head and his skull. The man's shield is his clothing of modesty to protect his hawa. So and his, all his practices, the man's shield is his ring that his allegiance to Prophet and that he prays, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem as a result of reviving the sunnah, make this to be the power of Sayyidina Sulaiman that you gave to Sayyidina Sulaiman salam. grant me from Ummatul Muhammad more power than that Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem in your generosity. And as you grant it to the cane of Sayyidina Musa salam to save his people Grant me more power in my asa to save my people and my family and my community, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem. So it means everything that being done is an armament and preparing our armies for the way of Sayyidina Mahdi which is not anything physical, there's no, nothing for anybody physical. Heavenly kingdom and heavenly soldiers just their heart and their eyes is enough to take away all evilness. But they have to be from the kingdom, they have to honour the kingdom, they have to be in the way of Muhammadun Rasulullah and alhamdulillah and they honour, respect and love that way. If they don't then what would give them kingdom protection? They see the people, oh why you have to dress like that, why you have to put like that? Don't do it akhi and wait to see what comes and see if you're empty head and your clothes going to protect you with anything. Yeah. But those whom they have the love of Prophet and they carry everything in that love, Allah is shy to destroy somebody looking like Sayyidina Muhammad The angels are accompanying that person that they take the look of Sayyidina Muhammad So it means so many, so many teachings of this reality. So any, anyone whom disarms you from heavenly protection is what we call a demon because they only want the worst from you. Do you think Allah comes and inspires you, take your clothes off? No. So anyone who, who wishes for you harm is a demon. Anyone whom inspires you to enter into a fire and to harm yourself is demonic. So that's how we know it's demonic, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al- Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Najjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people 
and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.